Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about my new project, which is to send data from one ESP module to the other using AT commands. So you don't need any programming for this. All you need is the AT firmware, which you need to upload in both of these modules. And one ESP module will be configured as client and another as a server. We'll send data from client to server. Then we'll make this as a client and we'll send data from client to the server so that it's a half duplex communication. You cannot simultaneously communicate, but one needs to be in a client mode, one needs to be in a server mode, and then only the data sending is possible. So let's get started with this project. The thing you require is one ESP01 module, one USB to TTL converter, along with a mini breadboard, with some breadboard wires, one reset button. And this is a bare minimum circuit that you can make as you can see, I have not used any resistors here. So the reset button is connected to pin 2, chip enable and VCC are grounded and you are given to 3.3 volts. I am using 3.3 volts from this FTDI module itself, which will be connected to my laptop COM port. So I am drawing power from the laptop's 5 volt, okay, so from the COM port. And that is converted into 3.3 volt using this module and it is given to the ESP board. So there is an option in this module, you can see this jumper, you have to put it on the on this side, that means it's 3.3 volts. I will remove it and show it to you, you can see here, if it's 3.3 volts you need to put it here, if it's 5 volts you need to put it here. So I will keep it on 3.3 volts. So in this way this circuit is made, the circuit diagram is given in the blog, link is in the description. If you are new to ESP01 module or ESP modules in general, then check out my beginner's guide to ESP module video link is given in the description. So if you are newly bought this ESP modules from the market, the default AT firmware is still in these boards. So you don't need to upload AT firmware. But if you have uploaded some other Arduino code in these chips, then the AT firmware is erased, the default AT firmware. So you need to upload the AT firmware again in these modules. But from where to get that AT firmware, okay, that is a challenging part because the manufacturer ESP8266 does not provide AT firmware for all the variants, okay, for all the ESP8266 variants. So fortunately, there is one blog which gives a bin file, AT firmware bin file to this old module. The bin file is given in the blog link is in the description. Download that AT firmware bin file and upload it using ESP Flasher tool. The steps I will show you later in this video. So now let's upload the AT firmware from the ESP flash download tool. The ESP flash download tool can be downloaded from the ESP official website. This is the ESP flash download tool. The AT firmware also you can get from the blog link is in the description. So here you can see initially all the these are the address locations to which we are going to write our bin file. So this is the bin file AI Thinker ESP8266. To select it, if the bin file exists, then it will turn green. You have to write it on address location 0. So write here 0x0. Zero zero. You have to tick on this box. Okay. Then only this will turn green and this bin file will be selected. The SPI speed must be 40 megahertz. SPI mode must be DIO. Here, don't make any changes here. Okay. This is idle. Right now, the board is not connected to the COM port. If you try to select the COM port, there is no COM port. It's not detected. So, what you do is connect the board to one of the COM port. And again, hit the arrow. You can see COM port. The board is connected to the COM4. Now click on start. So before clicking on start, you need to put the board in programming mode. So pull the GPIO0 to ground. Hit the reset button. Now the board, ESP board is in the programming mode. And I will hit on start. You can see a sync is written. Now downloading will start. So this will flash the AT firmware into the ESP8266 chip. You need to do the same procedure with the other module because we are going to use two modules in this project, one as a client and one as a server. When finish comes, 
you need to stop it you can just close this now remove the board from programming mode hit the reset button open any serial terminal from arduino this is a dock light i am using here so dock light is a serial terminal port serial terminal program you can use any familiar serial terminal program as you like so you can see com4 board rate is 115200 i will hit on okay now i will test the at commands okay i will send at if the response i get is like this at okay means the at firmware is being downloaded now i can send the other at commands to start the server to connect to wifi and all such necessary at commands now let's get to the main project which is to send data okay so both the modules are now uploaded with the at firmware and i've connected them to two separate com ports as you can see now they are ready to receive the at commands set one as a server and the other one as a client So this window is for this module and this one is for this. So first I will connect both of these modules to the internet. So I'll set the board in station mode. In station mode it connects to the Wi-Fi. So now let's connect to the Wi-Fi by sending this command at plus cwjp. This is my password, SSID name and password. It's showing Wi-Fi disconnected. That means uh, the Wi-Fi is off. We'll turn on the hotspot. Yes, so now both of the modules are connected to the Wi-Fi. Now this module I want it to set as server. So I will send two commands. One is at plus cip mux is equal to one, which will allow multiple clients to the to connect to the same server. And then we'll start the server at port 80. So this module is right now acting as a server but we need its IP address for the client to connect to it. So to get the IP address, we will send this command at plus CIP STA. Okay. And as you can see, we have got the IP address. This IP address we want, we don't need the gateway and mask. So this is our client. We need to use one command at plus CIP start. So in this command, you can see First is the TCP, which is the protocol we are using. Then this is the domain name, which is nothing but the IP address of our server, which is this module. So this IP address, which we got from here, this is on port 80. So here it's written 80. Then RNN, new line and return. And then you have to pass this 80 command. So after entering this AT command, we get the response connect OK. That means we have successfully connected to our server. Now we are ready to send the data from client to the server. To send the data, first we need to send the length of the message in bytes. So if you have to send hello, so hello contains total five plus new line and return. So total there are seven strings, seven characters in hello. So first we'll send length by 80 plus CIP send is equal to seven. Once we send the response, we can see here, we get okay, followed by an arrow. This is not just uh, any arrow, it is very important. If we get this arrow, that means it's ready to receive the data. Then only we can send this data hello. And once completely all the seven buffers are filled, it will respond receive seven bytes, send OK from the client side. So this is a response we get on the client from this RxTx serial communication. And on the server side, you can see we have received hello. So this is the message that we get IPD 0 comma 7. So 7 means seven bytes we have received hello from the client to the server. So once the data is received, we can close the server from the client side. AT plus CIB close. Okay. And if suppose we have to set this as client now, we can again set this as a server. Okay. So that now this can become a client and send data to this module. 
So we can switch between client server at any given time, depending on who is to send data. CI Bmux is equal to one and create server. So now this is acting as a server. Now we will make this one as a client, okay? To make this as a client, now this is in server mode. So to escape from server mode, one way we can do is to reset the board, but we don't want to reset. So what we will do is, we'll just close the server. We'll make sure that CIP mux is equal to zero, means only single connection. Then we will connect to this board's IP address. Yes, it's showing connect okay. So now this is a client and this is a server. I will send data from client to the server. We will send hello. First we will send hello length. Then we will send the data hello. So it's showing send okay. And here you can see hello. So in this way, once the data is successfully sent, the purpose of server is done. We can close the server from client side immediately close the server, close the server from the client side and go into the server mode because we don't want the board to remain in the client mode for too long. In this way, we can send data from one board to the other. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and for more interesting electronic projects, stay tuned to my channel, subscribe to my channel. Thank you again. Goodbye.